If you want to hear my answers to the beauty consumer tag, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elaine with another tag video. Yes, they have been buzzing about the YouTube beauty community and I am finally getting to them. This is the third tag of my little catch up. Oh, and I should mention, if you are not subscribed yet to this channel and you have been watching for a while, may I suggest you hit that little subscribe button it would help me out a lot. And if you're new to this channel and you don't know whether or not to hit that subscribe button, I am hoping to help you make that decision. <laughs> All right, let's get into this tag. This tag was created by Soraya, a, who is known as the 90s love child here on YouTube. I will put her channel right here. And she created a uh, quite a few questions for this tag, a total of 13. And um, I am very nervous about filming this tag, so please be gentle in the comments. This is a rough one. This is a very uh, vulnerable feeling kind of sets of questions. And if you want to see Sarai's uh, answers, I will put her tag video right here for your convenience. And I won't stall any further. I'm going to jump right in and uh, let's see what happens. So the first question is, how much do you spend on makeup a month or a year? And when I've taken a look at all of the videos that have been, uh, that have answered these questions, everybody has done an estimate. And I'm not going to say more than the following. If you don't add up your makeup purchases, I think it would be a shock to see exactly how much we're actually spending on a month to month basis across everything, makeup, skincare, etc. that has to do with cosmetics. And I would even add perfume in there, to be quite frank. And I did do a tally last year. And in my opinion, the number was gargantuan. Yeah, I'm using that word. And that really took me aback and had me feeling a little panicky, actually. And so I thought I was turning this year, 2019, into a no-buy. I made it until Memorial Day weekend, where a number of palettes that I had been ogling <laughs> came on for half off. And actually, a number since then have come on for the type of price that I would choose to pay for the palettes. And so this year has been a rounding out of my collection, and I've been very happy with that. But it is always in the back of my mind, that big number from last year. And that has made me consider more, although I think that I still spent more than I should have this year. I'm not going to give you a number, long and short, because I'm not comfortable with providing it for a number of reasons. For a number of reasons. I'll leave it at that. You can be unhappy with that answer. And to me, I say, too bad. <laughs> uh, that's as much information as I'm going to give. I would definitely say that it's more than I would advise someone to spend. Okay, moving on. Number two, do I ever feel guilty about how much I spend on makeup? Yes. Yes. I felt extremely guilty last year. I still feel guilty this year. Um, I'm happy with the number of purchases because some specific purchases have helped me grow this channel in remarkable ways as far as the kind of traction I had before and what I have now. So I'm very grateful for that. And those purchases I'm, I'm very happy with. And I'm 
a lot more discerning than I was last year, and that's been very helpful. But there, I definitely know that what I'm buying is creams and colored powders, and I'm coming to terms a lot more with the fact that I have everything in my collection that I can really need. And if anything, I've been rounding out my collection with staples and iconic palettes that are still very much in demand and that I have wanted for an extended period of time. So I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, and also some very affordable palettes that I'm very happy about as well. Uh, one thing of note though is that I have been wanting, and I don't usually, I'm not a completionist, but I've wanted for some reason to be a completionist with Juvia's Place. And there was a fantastic sale mid-December and I did not buy anything despite filling my cart. It had to be eight times or more. And I didn't buy anything. So I think that I'm turning that corner and being a lot better with my purchases and um, and hopefully showing solid products on, on this channel and uh, products that um, I'm not getting just for the hype, but I'm getting because I think that they are products that I want to try, really try and endorse on this channel. And I'm starting to feel the weight of the responsibility of not shilling just anything at any time to anyone. I really want to try things and be considered about how I spend my money and how I spend these video minutes with you. So yes, guilty? Mm -hmm. Check. Number three. Do you get FOMO related to makeup releases? I'm not big on limited edition. I, they annoy me. And I, they, they try to build in scarcity right off the hop. Now, some brands and some folks are really annoyed with that. But I actually appreciate some brands putting something in as limited edition and then having it as permanent later on because they get to gauge demand and I think it's actually responsible if you realize the wave of demand is so big, why wouldn't you come back and fill it? And one that I think is going to end up being permanent is the Metropolis palette by Natasha Denona. And I'm hoping that that size standard becomes something permanent in her line as well. So that is something that uh, comes to mind just when I think of a limited edition that, that should be permanent. I, I don't think we should get too our, our nose too out of joint. If anything, it might be an indication of frustration with ourselves for having spent uh, a significant amount of coin as a knee jerk because it's limited edition and whatnot. But that's just one take. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of folks will disagree with that statement, and that's okay. It's just a perspective of mine. Um, I think that testing the waters and then making something permanent is a smart business decision, to be quite honest. And if you're curious, if you want, I've been mulling this over for a while. My, my background is marketing and I look at cosmetics differently, I think, than maybe somebody without a marketing background. If you want me to kind of dissect makeup marketing a little bit, please let me know in the uh, comments and I may very well do a video specifically on that. Wearing the marketer's hat and talking about brand approaches to selling their products. And also with that knowledge, what we can do as a consumer to be smarter about our purchases and get the maximum value out of the experience of buying, owning and using makeup. Number five is an easy one. Finally, an easy question. Oh, is, uh, would you be willing to pay more money for a sold out product online? Not a chance, not a chance. If the brand doesn't want my money, I'm not chasing after it. I'm not chasing after a product. There is no product that is that valuable that I would pay a premium for. 
mm -mm, not going to happen. As a matter of fact, I consider regular price a premium. I just do. Number six, do you wish you could spend more or less? I would say it depends. If you're talking about for this channel, I would really appreciate eventually at some point the opportunity to get PR from the brands that I love the most. So yeah, and um, and I've actually thought of doing or, or approaching a few YouTubers that I know who have complimentary products to see if they would like to do a makeup swap with me for products that you can share, like you can sanitize eyeshadow palettes relatively easily. I wouldn't do that for lipsticks or any kind of cream products, but I think eyeshadow would be a nice thing to do to do a, a makeup swap with someone. Um, so that would allow me to try and use and review more uh, on this channel. So I would, I, I would love to get select PR from brands I know and respect. I would yeah appreciate being able to get some products that I just can't justify right now, at least for me. I can't buy those big Natasha Denona palettes. I just can't justify it, at least for now. And the Pat McGrath Mothership 5, which is I am just drooling over, over and over and over again. I just can't pay 170 bucks for for special shadows. I mean, I have Cleona shadows that are fantastic, and I just can't fork over that kind of coin for for that palette, even though it's still a deep, deep desire of mine. That one and the Natasha Denona Metropolis, they are definite, they're way up there, way up there, but not for this girl, at least not for now. And the last part of that question is, or less. And yes, I absolutely need to spend less. I did better this year than last year, mostly because of the first four months of nada, nothing. I have to say that makeup is pretty much the only thing I spend on. Really, I have plenty of clothes. I have uh, plenty of shoes, really, it's getting my hair dyed and and makeup and skincare. That, so it's really cosmetics that are my play area in my life. And that's really where the money goes. And we didn't go on vacation this year. So I, yeah, I got most of my entertainment from, <laughs> from cosmetics. Um, I do want to spend less. I absolutely do. And I think that I'm going to be handling makeup purchases quite differently in 2020 and I'll have a separate video on that topic uh, coming soon. Number seven, we are halfway. Do I feel compelled to buy something when I see it in someone else's collection? That's the beauty YouTuber community in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> Most of what I've ended up wanting, I didn't know existed until I started watching YouTube beauty channels. Uh, my gateway drug, as far as an influencer, was Tati. And I think she's still very good uh, with her videos and, and whatnot. I don't have a problem with her channel. I just don't watch it anymore. But she gave me a lot of great drugstore recommendations. And then I just started watching more beauty YouTube and getting a lot better at selecting products because I really started from zero in 2017. Zero, pretty much. And uh, and now I feel like I know a whole lot more. I am a lot more skilled and I know a lot more about brands and what I like and what I don't like. And, and I wanted to just try, 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 try. And so that really made me pay attention to what was in everybody's collection and collection videos were a type of video that I watched a lot, a lot. And second to that, declutter videos because I wanted to see what people were keeping. That's what I focused on. Not so much what they were decluttering. It was more what is staying in their collection over and over and over again. And those to me were the staples that I was 
going after. Now, just to round out that answer, if somebody makes a really strong recommendation, I take note, but I do pay attention to whether or not they keep using it. So just saying their favorite once, not good enough. I really want to see people using the products over and over again. And that is why I put everything that is on my face in the description box. And you will see a lot of face products that I use over and over and over and over again. And to me, that's the best endorsement for a product is if I choose to use it on camera multiple, multiple times, and I'm not, there's no benefit to me wearing it, nobody's sponsoring me, nobody's giving me money to do so in any way, shape or form. And I'm just letting you know what I like. And so I think that that's my way of helping people buy good stuff is you can always see what, what it is that I'm appreciating and using a lot of. Number eight is do I buy more during the holidays? The answer is yes. The answer is yes because I am a 50, no, I am a 40 to 70% off queen. That is when I buy makeup. There is so much makeup out and available that if I can't at least get 33% off, I'm not even looking at it. And when I buy something full price, it bothers me forever. And I think that using discretionary products is very emotionally based. And I know that I need to get makeup in a range of, in a price range that I am comfortable with. And I'm willing to forego some products to stay with that, within that comfort zone because I am irritated by any makeup that I've paid too much for. So I am one who welcomes uh, holiday sales and I can guarantee you that I will be taking a look at what is available from Boxing Day to year's end and see what ends up on the chopping block for many, many a store, including I want some candles. I've burned through most of my candles and I want to get some Christmas candles and fragrant candles uh, <laughs> that are going to be basically given away after the holidays, and I can guarantee you that is in my sights. I've been so good about not buying any, and I want a few, so I will be paying attention. But of course, I'll be paying attention uh, to cosmetics as well, which is the whole point of this tag. Number nine is, have you ever hidden a makeup purchase from family or friends? And I am going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes in the following way. I am one who is a trickle in buyer. Because I'm opportunistic, very often it'll be one product here, one product there, and a lot of the sale items at Sephora and shoppers are available only online. So sometimes you're getting a box for one item and I know that that is very wasteful and that's part of the consumption that I want to curb is I don't like having that much cardboard coming in um, so that's one thing and so I have quickly gotten rid of cardboard because just looking at the cardboard it looks like I bought a ton <laughs> maybe I've got seven boxes but I might just have 15 items, you know, a liner and a lipstick in one and then a small palette in another. It just, it just, the volume is unwieldy. And so that I've been kind of quick to move on out because I don't, I don't want it just hanging around because it even makes me feel uncomfortable. It's like, why, why is there all this cardboard? Luckily, uh, we recycle and we also have a fireplace and cardboard boxes are great to start fires with. So I don't, um, I, I fold them and put them in the firebox. Um, if I'm making a fire, I'll use those boxes right away. But I also have them um, stored for a, some, a small amount, stored for if I want to ship something to someone. For example, if there's a giveaway on this channel and 
um, I need to send a pallet to someone, well, I, I need a few boxes and I'm not going to go buy boxes if I'm getting them. So the shipping containers, yes, I have been expeditiously breaking those down and moving them out because I think it sends a message that is not accurate because I only bring in for every order a few items at a time. Um, and yeah, the, the, the volume of cardboard, that makes me feel guilty. I, I, I won't lie. Um, as far as the makeup, my husband and I share a big open bathroom. Um, my vanity is right behind you and all of my makeup is stored here. And then here I have um, a big storage area. Um, and behind the camera, I have my everyday makeup drawer. Um, so all of my palettes are back here. Most of my lipsticks are back here. I have a couple of uh, small train cases from Nalcom up here. I have two train cases down below, one for skincare and one for um, backups. It's amazing if you only have a few backups of every category of type of product. Um, yeah, you need a train case pretty quick. But that's, that's it and it's all open. Uh, he can open my drawers. He can see back here. He sees, he sees what I have. I mean, there's no, I'm not hiding, um, anything. And yeah, so that, that it's weird, but it's just that volume of cardboard that, that just bothers me. Oh, and, um, just as a follow-up, when it comes to spend, my husband and I have two joint credit cards. So I, I, I've used cash once. I used cash once last year out of convenience because we ended up having a bunch for whatever reason. Um, and I did buy a purchase and did make a purchase of Alginist, an Alginist set that was on really great deal. And I didn't uh, talk to him about it, but it was skincare. I didn't think he'd be all that interested to know. Um, so that would be the one. That would be the one. Anyway, moving on. Number 10. Mm. Do you have more than 10 products in your collection that you have not used in over a month? Do you know any YouTuber who would say no to this? Seriously? Uh, yeah. I mean, just, I have 10 products in my collection in brow products alone that I haven't used in over a month. Um, eyeliners that I haven't used in over a month. In the variety of looks for all sorts of different colors and finishes and different um, effects that we're trying to do and testing out one product against another, you do end up accumulating to a certain extent. So yeah, there are plenty of products that I haven't touched in over a month, but I do um, rotate them and cream products I rotate more often than powder products. Eyeshadow I'm not so worried about rotating as much as um, cream. Like Stila, Glitter and Glow, I want to make sure that I'm using um, NYX Jumbo Pencils, I want to make sure I'm using eyeshadow base, anything that is cream base, cream blush, cream bronzer, contour, that I want to um, use more often. But a month? Um, heck yeah, even a year, to be frank. Number 11, have you ever been pressured to purchase something you could not afford or did not need? No. No. Uh, did I put pressure on myself because I was trying to justify, rationalize, explain away why, um, explain away the guilt by saying how I needed a purchase? <laughs> yes. But I think we all have those tug of war struggles with ourselves when it comes to desire versus rational thought and thinking things through. <laughs> so I am one to fill up a, a cart and leave it, and walk away, and come back, empty it, refill it two days later, and come back. And I did that, like I said, with the Juvia's Place order. I kept filling it up, emptying it, filling it up, emptying it. I've done that with um, re recently with Juvia's Place, Pat McGrath, just because I was curious to see how much my desires would cost me, and off, oh, yeah, emptied that out. Um, so Juvia's Place, Pat McGrath, I mentioned, um, 
BH Cosmetics, because they had a 60, then 70, then 80% off sale. Hello. I just went and checked. Shipping, it just didn't make any sense. And I didn't, there was nothing I wanted badly enough. Colored Rain. I have definitely done that repeatedly. Urban Decay. There is one eyeshadow from Urban Decay I want badly. It's called Acid Rain. And I will not pay what they're asking for that eyeshadow. There's no eyeshadow worth that much. I will wait. I, I'm patient. I will wait. Um, one that I was really, really excited about were the Sephora Pro palettes last year. Those were really, really, really hard to not buy. And they, they were on sale just a week or two ago on Sephora. And boy, I was, mm, I was looking at those, but I have those shades. And I think the palette is beautiful and apparently it's heavy, it's luxe, it's everything. But I'm really more so now talking myself off the ledge because I virtually have every color I could possibly need. And it's more of a, I am appreciating the curation of palettes. And I think that at this point, that's more what I'm willing to pay for, as opposed to the most eyeshadows I can get for the least amount of money or, or the best quality, price quality uh, valuation that I can do. And my, my views have changed because of the size of my collection. I'm going to add uh, to that answer, and, and to, to be specific, the, the question is, have you ever been pressured to purchase something you could not afford or did not need? I don't feel that I've ever been pressured by a friend or a family member or anyone of that nature. Have I been enticed to really consider a product by you from, uh, from influencers? Of course, that's why they're called influencers. but. Um, the pressure really has all been on me for, from my perspective. And so I want to add to that answer. And one of them is getting goodies for friends and for giveaways for this channel. So very often I have done the, oh, this is a good price. And so I should get two because I, it would be great for a giveaway because it's a really good palette and I can get it for that price. Then I can kind of uh, spread the love. And I have a number of products that is available for future giveaways. And so I've stopped. I'm not, I'm not buying anymore. <laughs> and there's a pretty significant item in the first four months of 2020 that I will be putting in giveaways. So stay tuned for that. And that one I have had, I will not lie, it's a limited edition product and I've had for over a year now. And there's there are two reasons why I've waited on it so long before putting it in giveaways. And as soon as you find out what it is, if you've watched this channel regularly, you'll know exactly why I was waiting. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, have to, I felt pressure to buy things for giveaways and I've stopped that now until I'm out of giveaway items. I'm not buying anything else for giveaways and I'm probably fine for 2020. So just, I'm just saying that. Number 12 is, do you purchase makeup for collector reasons? No, there's not, I don't, I wanted a number of iconic palettes. So for example, for me, the ABH subculture, the and a few more that you're going to see soon. The um, Urban Decay Naked Palettes, because I wanted to understand what the big deal was. The Too Faced Chocolate Bar, Tartiste uh, Pro, the Urban Decay Born, Born to Run, the Queen of Hearts uh, Colored Rain, but that one, I, I mean, it's gorgeous. I, I really wanted it no matter what. Um, so not, not collection, not a collector, but 
an appreciator of palettes that stood the test of time and those tend to be the ones that make it into my collection. It's just a fact and they're still for sale and people still appreciate them. And when you see some folks, especially when they pan a palette and they buy it again and they have other palettes, that says something. So I want those types of palettes in my collection. So, and I call it a collection. So I do collect makeup. I appreciate playing with all sorts of textures, finishes, colors, everything. But I don't feel the need to amass like I used to. And I'm starting to kind of say, well, no, I don't need it. Like for example, the Juvia's Place, I have, I think 10 palettes and I really wanted to be a completionist and looked at the palettes and compared it to what I had. And I said, I have all the ones I want. I don't want the rest. The rest would just be to have the full set, but I don't, I won't use them. I have everything I need. So yeah, that's, I guess I'm not, I'm a collector of enduring products. I'm not a collector of brands. Number 13, it's the last one. Whew. If you are still here, man, you have um, some attention span, I tell you. So 13, ominously 13. I bet you Soraya did that on purpose. I don't know. Knowing her style, I think she finished on 13 on purpose. In your makeup journey, have you become less or more consumeristic? I think I'm following a similar path to a lot of folks on YouTube. I think I have passed the apex and now I'm, I'm coming down. I'm coming down of focusing more on what I have and realizing the fact that makeup is a consumable and that I better focus more on consuming than bringing more in and that there is so much that I can do with, with what I have. If I had, if three years ago me had seen this collection, she would say, oh my God, how could you possibly want anything more? And I want to play with my collection in such a way that I honor the fact that that's how I would have felt. And I want to feel that way now. And I am extremely appreciative of what I have in my collection and what I've been able to amass this year. But that's it. I'm appreciative and I want to show that appreciation by making better, more methodical use and more it just keep that enthusiasm for products that I've had for a while. And so, and, and frankly, you are a big help as my viewers for this when it comes to the palette roulette uh, series. I end up using products in products and product combinations that I may not have reached for if, if it wasn't for you. And you are really, really helping me make the most of this collection. And if anything, we're sharing in that experience because I'm sure that all of us are seeing some eyeshadow combinations that we wouldn't have experienced in any other way. So for that, that partnership that we have in a way, I really, really appreciate. And that's why I'm going to keep that palette roulette um, going into well into 2020. And so to finish up on 13, I'm going to say that next year, I'm not going to be less consumeristic because consumers means to consume products. If anything, I want to be more consumeristic, but I want to be more consumeristic within what I have and stop looking outward because I have a lot and I have a ton to play with. The only exception I can think of because I, it's turning into a tradition is to do reviews of the holiday purchase with purchase gift sets that come out from the big brands um, 
Estee Lauder, Lancôme, and um, Elizabeth Arden. I can see that continuing on, especially for Lancôme and Elizabeth Arden, because those two brands I've done two years in a row now, and I'd really like to do next year. Um, and that makeup, for the most part, I do pass on. I pass on the, if I've used the mascaras already and I know what I, what I think, I just pass those on brand new. I pass on um, the uh, liners if I can. Um, in some cases, I have just swatched lipsticks and not worn them, and I've passed those on to friends who know that it was just swatched on my hand and never put on my lips. That kind of thing. So I think that that is the big exception next year is that um, I really want to keep consumption to a minimum. But I still want to do those holiday sets because um, I think it's helpful getting reviews from someone who's used the sets for going on three years. So yeah, that that is the, the big one that I, I want to keep doing. Thank you so much to Soraya. 90s love child here on YouTube for creating this tag. It was fun and gut-wrenching at the same time. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the answers. I found it an interesting experience to answer them. And with that, I'll say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it every time, and I hope to see you in the next video. But for now, Take care.